Yeah. I have a question for Professor uh, Davis. What do you think about the concept of political nation? And, uh, it's, uh, it, and uh, what do you think it's possible to apply to the Grand Duchy of Lithuania? Very good question. Um, I, I referred to your book, I think, about making Russians. Um, the uh, classic idea that uh, uh, conscious nations were constructed in the, uh, the modern period, uh, i.e. started with peasants and you produced Frenchmen at the end of it, or you uh, created Britishness in the 18th and 19th century by conscious policies. And, um, Creating consciousness. Political nation is, is something different. I, it's a, a political community uh, which only refers to the people who wield political power. Uh, so far we've not mentioned the fact that the, the greatest part of the population of these lands were serfs until 1860s. Uh, they were not only illiterate, generally speaking, uh, they were also um, politically impotent. Uh, so uh, any concept such as a political nation can only apply to that narrow uh, uh, layer of the population uh, which was educated and which could have political influence. Uh, now, uh, I do believe that there was a political nation uh, in that sense. It evolved over the centuries. Uh, uh, it um, began be by being separate from the Kingdom of Poland. Uh, and the influences within it were less Polish than the, the than Became. But after the, uh, the late 16th century, this political notion, this political community, was essentially um, uh, Polish. The race, Polish speaking, uh, and inspired by the political traditions of the uh, Kingdom of Poland. So, um, yes, there was such a thing. Uh, but this um, political Nation, this political community, was the principal target of Russian power when it came at the end of the 18th century. And the Russian uh, Empire was principally concerned not with eradicating uh, Polish um, speakers, Polish uh, uh, or Lithuanian, Be Belarusian ethnic communities. What they were aiming to destroy was this political community. And to a large degree, of course, they, they succeeded. What emerged a hundred years later is not, although there were people like Joseph Pilsudski who looked back to that uh, um, political community, but what emerged as the dominant forces in the late 19th century were the modern political national movements, Lithuanian, Belarusian, Polish. Ukrainian and I mentioned Zionism, which is a, a typical example of, of those developments. Thank you. The gentleman in the third row from the back. Yes, uh, uh, Edward Lucas, me, economist. Um, I, I, just following on from that, I'm slightly uncomfortable with the idea of these precise separate categories. It seems to be one of the good things about the Grand Duchy was that it allowed people to be, you could be lots of different things. and I think if you, if I could go back a few hundred years and explain to them, we'd be arguing about whether people were Polish or Lithuanian, or whether the, um, you were, as you just said, there's a separate identity called Jewish. They would find that rather, um, they'd find that rather baffling. And I'm just wondering if you could, if you could elaborate a bit more on the way in which the, um, we, we, the, the sort of identity politics of the 19th century seem to have become a kind of almost a prism for the way we look at things 
now, and I would wonder if that's necessary, and whether you'd agree that the grand, going back to the Grand Duchy is actually a way of, of dissolving these um, quite often unhelpful pigeonholes. I couldn't agree more, Edward, than the, uh, the idea that the 19th century categories are projected backwards and are uh, our most usual and convenient way of, of looking at it. Um, however, I wouldn't go to the opposite extreme. I wouldn't say, you mentioned, for example, Jewishness. Uh, although nature of Jewish identity changed, it's quite clear that all the way through, <coughs> Jews, in some respects, were separate and different from the others. Uh, obviously because of their religion, but also because of the culture of their religion, i.e. Uh, learning Hebrew and um, uh, uh, learning to be separate in many spheres, not absolutely, but nonetheless, to a degree separately. Uh, it's also true that um, the religious communities, which were probably a stronger I, uh, identifying label than uh, political or uh, national communities, nonetheless were connected with particular um, linguistic groups. Um, uh, talk of the Ruthenians, right? They were. Um, predominantly Slavic speaking, but also Orthodox. Um, similarly, the, the, the Pol Polish speakers were predominantly, although not exclusively, uh, Roman Catholics. But the problem, of course, is, is with the Lithuanians, right? Where they, uh, Lithuanians are Catholics like the Poles, but speak a different language. And uh, there's a different, a complicated mixture there. But, um, uh, I, I think what we, we have to talk about this political community uh, as being uh, something which had uh, common values. It also had common languages. I mean, Ruski was the uh, old Belarusian, was the official language of the, the Grand Duchy in the first Jagiellonian period of the Union. Uh, and then the official language became uh, Polish and Latin. Uh, especially Polish. Um, uh, but it didn't mean that all Polish speakers, again, we, we, we're talking about a small segment of the, of the population. Um, and one thing which uh, we could talk is, as it were, the common worldview of um, serfs, whatever uh, happened to be their uh, religion or their, their native language. They had lots of other things in common uh, than what, as it were, modern national movements uh, were describing.